Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out the Hornet King channel. In this video, I want to show you guys the process that I use to remove this European Hornet colony from the trunk of this tree. So this being one of my favorite removal videos, I wanted to represent it to the channel being properly cut, remastered, color graded, with the proper voiceover to explain what's happening in the video. I'm also going to be including shots from the follow-up videos which show me dissecting the nest and explaining what is happening inside. Not too many people knew these two follow-up videos even existed. So now combining them with the original content, people get to see the full cohesive removal process with proper explanation of what's actually happening in this video. So let's just jump right into the full removal process of this colony, plus a full explanation of what happens inside these nests from larva to pupating adult. Here's the video guys, check it out. Alright, so as with any of my removals, the first part of the process is vacuuming up as many of the forgers as I possibly can. Now vacuuming a wasp nest like this is a matter of sticking the nozzle kind of off center from the hole and trying to catch as many of the foragers as they're either taking off or landing. I'm not trying to vacuum up wasps off the surface of the entranceway. Um, a lot of misconception from commenters, they think I'm trying to vacuum them directly out of the hole and they think I need a stronger vacuum. So what is actually happening here is when they're landing and they're sitting on the surface of the wood, they have hooked feet and those hooks allow them to attach really well to the surface of the wood since it's really rough. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of set the vacuum nozzle kind of off center there and off um, on a little bit of an angle and allows any ones that are flying in, you see them going directly down the, the, uh, the nozzle and being vacuumed up. Vespa crab bro, they make colonies inside of cavities. So in this case, this is an ash tree and this ash tree has been killed by an ash board beetle. And so the inside of the tree is completely hollow and this tree is completely dead. So what happens is the Vespa crab bro will actually build the colony inside of the tree itself within the cavity. Uh, this particular species does not make very much envelope. So you see the only envelope that they actually made was right there at the crack of that tree. And inside the structure in which they build the nest is actually what creates the protective barrier around it. So like bald-faced hornets make a big envelope conical shaped nest. Well, Vespa crab are built through that. They only make a little bit of envelope. So at this point I had actually bumped underneath of the nest and had disturbed all the guards and the foragers that were inside of it. And you see them all swarming around. Now this gives a great example as to how these guys actually function when they fly past the nozzle. People think oftentimes that when they fly past the nozzle that they're going out and they're escaping, quote unquote. Well, they're not. They're actually flying out, they're swarming me, and then they're flying right back to the hole. So you can see all the ones floating around there. They're the ones that had come out and swarmed. And now they're flying right back into the entranceway. So as you can see here, I'd actually got venom sprayed into my right eye. And a lot of people ask why I wasn't wearing safety glasses. I was actually wearing safety glasses, but this was like an 85, 90 degree day, and they were just getting fogged up too quick, so I took them off. Uh, being sprayed in the eye is just like kind of getting a little bit of an ear tint, so it's not a big deal. I'm a nurse, so I just kind of flushed my eye out with a little bit of saline, and, um, and everything was fine within a few minutes. I'm going to get ready to uh, cut this with the chainsaw then. So to get this nest out, I wanted to cut it out. And a lot of people suggest just wrapping the tree in some cellophane or some kind of uh, saran wrap or something and trying to trap them in there and gas them. Well, the thing is, is they can chew through wood, so they can chew through cellophane. It would be kind of superfluous to try to do that. Also, is gassing a nest, I, I don't go to client's house with a gallon of gas or any kind of other major toxins. I literally will vacuum out and mechanically remove nests, and that way I can preserve whatever uh, new queens and males that are within the colony I can preserve them and I can also f then feed the other uh, the larva and the pupating adults to my animals. Um, I don't want to be feeding my animals any poisoned nests and I also like to recycle the colonies because well I like to recycle life. Um, if I have to remove a nest and have to destroy it I would way rather have it be uh, fed to my animals and be able to complete their, uh, their full life cycle by um, preserving life with, within my animals. Uh, circle of life, everybody. I could only see five tiers of um, comb, so I knew that it went further up into the tree, so I wanted to cut up a little bit higher and expose the rest of the colony. I could have reached my hand up in there and tried to get out as much as I could, but again, I'm trying to preserve the comb so that way I can release the new queens. 
So I slowed down this little shot here, which is pretty pretty wild. The uh, This Hornet comes flying out and hits right on the, the lens of the camera. Bam! <laughs> you want to rewind that and see it in full speed. It's pretty funny. So this is the full extent of the comb, and that is a super tall nest. There were a lot of individuals in this nest. Um, I counted 300, I think it was 395 individual adults that I had sucked up in the vacuum, which I show you in a little bit. Um, but that does not include the amount of pupating adults and larva. So that count would have been probably up, you know, high of uh, 800, maybe almost 1,000, somewhere in there of actual individuals within this colony. I didn't mind cutting into this tree, and the homeowner was totally cool with it because the tree was dead anyway. We ended up just taking the tree down um, after removing the colony from it, so there was no threat posed to the, to the homeowner. I would typically like to relocate this entire colony, um, and basically what happened was this, this, uh, the homeowner and his kids are allergic to, to wasp venom, and this nest was probably about maybe 15 yards away from the corner of his house, and uh, his kids were coming out and playing in the yard, and they were getting swarmed. So um, the nest had to go and had to be removed. So just going around, just checking for any other individuals that were in between the combs. So once I start pulling the nest out, that vibration can set them off and more of them can start swarming out. So I'd like to try to get as many of the foragers now as I can. That massive swarm you saw about maybe two minutes ago, they were all in the vacuum already. So none flew back into the colony after that and none had flown out and disappeared. They all went right into the, right into the vacuum. So just the last couple shots of getting the, the, the length of the comb there. Unfortunately, I stood right in front of the camera when I was trying to remove it, and you don't get to see that. This is the queen here. I was able to show her next to the lens. Of course, it was a little bit blurry, but you get to see her in a little bit um, at the end when I start taking apart the colony. So before I put it in the bin, I just want to separate all the comb layers and get out any of the individual wasps. As you can see, there's a couple still sitting between the comb layers. Try to get them as all of them have vacuumed up as I can, so that way there's none just like kind of free ranging within the bucket on my way home. So any ones that I find after breaking the, the comb apart, um, I just vacuum them up real quick. Even though the comb structure of the, of the actual cellulose that they use to build these nests is, is pretty weak, the structures of pulling them apart is really difficult. As these wasps actually build these comb. Um, parts that they don't use anymore, where they'll, they'll chew up and break down um, and mix with more saliva, and then they build the structures for the next comb below it. So those structures, those support structures are really, really strong, and they're not nearly as brittle as, as the actual cells in the comb themselves. So I kind of hung around for a little bit after removing the actual colony, and I just wait for our foragers to come back. So as you can see here, one of the larvae actually popped on the top of the comb, and I started feeding that to the other larva just to demonstrate how the adult wasp will go out and catch food and bring it back for the larva. The actual adult wasp cannot eat solid food. Even though they're the ones going out and doing the hunting, their waist between their thorax and their abdomen is not large enough to be able to pass solid food through. So they can only eat fluid. So they bring the chunked food back and they feed it to the larva. The larva then act as an external stomach. They chew up all the food and then they regurgitate an enzyme and protein rich fluid and then they kind of wobble around within the cell they then regurgitate that fluid and feed it to the adults just listen to the sound of this nest so this is not enhanced audio you're actually hearing the sound of the colony this is a scraping noise that the larva will actually do on the side of the cell and that signals to the, the adult wasp that they want to be fed or that they have fluid that they need to regurgitate. People often think that that sound is what actually drives the colony, but it's actually not the sound, it's the vibration on the comb itself. So the adults that are standing on the cell are very, very sensitive and when that scraping sound is happening, that vibration is attracting them to that area. Don't eat, Don't eat the adults.
Here. I'll feed you in a minute. There's plenty to go around. You guys are going to be full after this. Chickens are hungry and they're ready to be fed. Don't eat the adults, please. Why don't you go away? Angel, listen. 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 I just don't want you eating the adults, okay? See if there's any new, new hatched adults yet. Queen comb. Right there. See, there's a couple of them coming out. One there, and one there. These are new queen combs. See how much bigger these are compared to those. So there's going to be new girls in there. Which they're coming out the bottom. Alright girls, here. Don't eat. Don't eat the adults. That's why I bring a lot of my nests home. Because my chickens are hungry. So these nests don't go to waste. They get turned into my eggs that I eat. Barf think about that for once. Alright, so like I said those are the adults coming out. We'll see that over there. This is the queen. She is humongous. This is one of her girls. They're all pretty big. I, I didn't count all these yet. But I kind of like to count to see how many there are. There's quite a bit here. So, yeah. And the sounds that these things are making is nuts. These girls will be out shortly. Shut up. Okay. Just as a comparison. Southern yellow jacket. German yellow jacket and her queen. Bald faced hornet. European hornet and her queen. That is the difference in size between these things. This is about an inch and a half long. Queen is about an inch and three quarter inches long. That is the difference. Yellow jacket has little circles on their abdomen. She similarly has circles, but they're indented into her stripes. Isn't too sure what she's doing just yet. Chewing her way out. Cleaning herself off because she just came out of the comb not too long ago. Here. She's feeding off a larva inside the comb. See, this one's going to be a new queen. And 
that one's a worker. Pretty wild to see their behavior up close. going for is, if you look deep down inside of here, that's the new larva. And that's what they're feeding off of, is the excretion from those larva. This is the larva I've captured so far, just out of the nest alone. There has been, I've counted 325, but my chickens ate some of it over there. I had a nice big pile over there. But that's what they're doing. They know to come out of the nest and do these things. Look at the hair on the side of her face. Seven. Now. I just wanted to get a little close-up of holding an individual European Hornet Queen. So this is a new queen. This is not the queen. Um, at the end of the season, new queens will hatch out along with males. They're also called reproductives, and then they will leave the colony, mate, and then the new queens will start a new colony the following season. All right, so I wanted to give you guys some details on pupating adults and how the larvae actually develop into a full-grown hornet. So what I have here are different stages of pupating adults. So this here is a larva that has not started developing yet into, a, and into an adult, but you can see two little slight purple lines right to the back of its head. And those are actually developing eyes of the full-grown hornet. So when I turn it over on its side here, you can see it a little bit better. All right, see that little slight discoloration right there? That is actually the eye of the full-grown hornet. So even though the position of the larva's head is small and forward, its head will actually turn into the mandibles of the full-grown hornet. So you can kind of see on that one's developing a little bit more. It has already started pupating. So you can see its purple is starting to develop a little bit further right there between my tweezers. And eventually it starts to develop like this one here, this pupating adult. And I just think that is so wild that the position of the head of the larva changes to become the mandible of the full-grown hornet. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out the Hornet King channel. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you think about revisiting an older video and remastering it and bringing it up to the current Hornet King standards. If you guys like to see more of those types of videos, drop in the comments and let me know. I genuinely appreciate all the support and encouragement you guys have given me throughout the last two years of being here on this channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.